Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Little short video for you here. Some of you, or if not most of you anglers out there, probably use these sort of flasks with your cup of tea and your soup, just a push button top one, you pour it into the cup. Now I like to use something a little bit different on the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. And I've recently in my LRF videos been using one of these. Now it looks a lot bigger than the uh, the flask here. It's actually pretty much the same size. It's called a gilly kettle and they come in roughly three different sizes. And the way it works is, it's quite a cool little contraption really. So it, it pops off here. This is this is your, your kind of base bowl. And in here, as you can see, it's all burnt to black. That's because that's where you put all your twigs, uh, your leaf, dried leaves and things like that. You light them up, then this is the kettle there, you can see it's a big hole in the front, it's like a funnel, that sits on top and then under here, in that hole there, that's where you pour your water and that goes around the outside of the actual funnel, so it's a, it's a quite clever invention really, so the heat will come up, flames occasionally will come up through here, so that's heating all the outside of this and it's actually boiling your water and that's basically how the kettle works. It's quite a clever contraption. It's not, I don't use it just for cups of tea and things like that. I use it for quite a few other things. But before we get started doing this and, and me showing you how to use it, let's just show you a couple of tips on starting that flame. Now, before you can light your fire, obviously you're gonna go, you have to go out there and collect sticks, bits of twigs, dried leaves, things like that. Emphasis on dry, you must use dried stuff. If I show you these here, it's recently rained today. These are pretty dark looking sticks. I've, I've snapped these up earlier for the camera. These probably wouldn't use really, they're a bit wet. Whereas these are a lot drier. Okay, I've had these undercover, I've kept these dry overnight. These are much drier, these will burn a lot better. Just basic fire stuff really. So I've gone and collected a load of sticks here purely because when you start the ghillie kettle, you need to have all your sticks ready. It's just like any fire, really. If you start a fire and you don't have enough sticks, you've then got to go and collect the, fire, the sticks, the fire might go out. So I know this isn't a huge fire, but you need to have your sticks ready. It just saves you going out there halfway through while you're fishing, you've got to stop fishing and then go out and get all the sticks. So collect all your sticks beforehand. You can even put your sticks in a little resealable bag. You can dry them out overnight and come in to take them to your fishing session, just a little bag of twigs and sticks and things like that. Um, what I've got here is, this is probably what I'll start with, using these really fine, thin, dry twigs. There's some dried leaves there as well. That's probably what I'll start with. And then I've just graded them really, so I've gone up to a bit thicker there. So as the flames start to build up, I'll start putting those ones on. And then we'll finish up on a little bit thicker there. And then when the fire's really going well and you've got a good bed of ash going, We'll go on to the, that's probably the limit I would use for a ghillie kettle, I wouldn't go any thicker than that. There's only a small pan that it's in. You can also use, and I, what I found is useful, uh, small pine cones actually. Time, there's a time of season when they fall off the trees obviously, but if you can collect the pine cones, they burn really well. So let's get this fire going and I'll give you a couple of tips on starting that fire. Right now, being an outdoors person, I like to start fires the proper way and that would involve things like a fire starter and uh, some tinder and things like that. But purely for the video, I'm just gonna use a lighter and some cotton wool. Cotton wool is really good for getting those, the fire started. It's almost better than newspaper really, because the flame takes hold a lot quicker. So a lot of the time you'll think, oh, cotton wool, I'll just burn it, you know, straight up like this. Don't do that, here's a tip. If you peel it, they tend to have two layers. If you peel it open, there's lots of this fluffy stuff inside. Now that's the stuff that, the tinder almost, that really can get going. So just fluff it up a bit like that and that's the that's the stuff that you're going to light now i'll place those really light twigs that i've got those dry twigs uh, and i'll start off with them and then i'll build up layers to get it going so i'm just going to get a couple of these fluff them up a bit these are on the the base layer as it is of this um gilly kettle just fluff them up i've got a couple here these are great if you just keep them in your uh fishing your tackle box things like that um, you, can use you can use matches or a lighter, obviously it doesn't matter, just like I say for the sake of the video, I'm just going to use a lighter. And I'm just placing these around the, the whole base of this uh, pan here. The reason why I'm, I'm trying to cover the whole area is because I want that fire to have a, a strong base. If you do it all in the middle, the outsides won't heat up. And it just means that when it comes to getting that, that fire going later, it makes it a bit difficult to keep it going. So I try and cover the whole bottom of that pan. So last one here, 
fluff it up a bit. You don't have to do it too much. So there's my bed layer of, uh, of tinder, if you want to call it. Then I'm going to get these really thin dry twigs. And I'm just going to put a couple in. I don't, want to, I don't want to overdo it because the flames need to take hold. So I'll just put a few in to start with. And then I'll build that up as that flame gets bigger. Now before I light it guys, just a couple of basic safety things. Fire is dangerous. Obviously it's not something that sh you should, you know, mess around with really. Do take it seriously. If you're at a fishery or something like that, maybe ask. Because it is, it's an open flame, uh, but it's not you know, on the ground as such, it is kept in a bowl, but it's still an open flame. So it might be worth asking your fishery or wherever you're fishing, just permission to say that you will be using a, a ghillie kettle. So I've got my uh, little bit of cotton wool and dry twigs in there. This is the hole in this base, because when that kettle goes on, that's how the oxygen gets in to keep those flames going. Uh, and often when it's going and it, it is burning out, you have to blow into that hole to give it more oxygen just to keep those flames going. So what I've done is I've stuck a bit of cotton wool out there and that's the bit I'll light. It's not the world's most amazing lighter. You won't see the flame very well probably on the camera. But as that burns through you just want to be careful with it blowing out because you don't want that. You want some of the twigs to, to, to take hold first. So that cotton wool as you can see I'm not going to put any more twigs on just yet because that's not they're not even a light yet so there's no point. So just let that build up. I'm waiting for the flames to come across to the middle as well. I can see some of the twigs are starting to light now. Now these twigs obviously burn quickly. So we're just letting it get round now. As you can see those flames are getting bigger. I'm still not going to put any on just yet. Okay, flames are getting slowly bigger. I'll put a few on this side now. Always make sure that when you when you start to do it to begin with, you do want those dry twigs. See now that flame's gone a bit. I'll let that pick up. Right, so while that's burning down now, just getting that base layer, I'm going to put the water in here. Obviously, like I said, they come in three sizes. Uh, I think there's a half litre, a litre and a litre and a half. I think I've just gone for the litre one. This is just a carrying handle for when it does get hot, because this whole metal bit does get hot. Obviously at the moment, nothing in it. So we've got the water. Just in a little container here. Fill it right up. You don't want to, you know, scround, go scrounging with this one. Just fill it right up. As I say, it takes a good liter of water. This, so it's going to take most of that. Uh... You don't want to overfill it as well. That's the other thing, because if it goes, spills out and goes in the fire, it's going to put your fire out. So that's about right. Water's just on the edge there. Then this, uh, the, the sort of whistle bit is connected to a chain so you can't fall off. This chain is so that obviously if you grab that, that's going to burn you because that's going to be hot. So that's what this chain is for. You can just pop it off like that and you can the chain acts as a pouring thing as well. So you can pour the water like that. So we'll pop that on. I can see the fire is getting going now. So we'll pop this on the fire and then this funnel, this is where the funnel starts to work. The oxygen comes through that hole that's at the bottom in the base. You can blow in more oxygen to boost it and that flame comes out and then all you've got to do is just put the twigs in at the top. Easy. Right, so we've got it going now. We've put the kettle on the base and now all you have to do is you can see it's kind of like a chimney really. It's got that funnel. You're just watching your hands, not burning hands. You can drop your sticks in there, let them burn away. If the flame comes up too high, just leave it for a bit, let it burn down and you just pop your sticks in. And that the benefit of that wide hole there is that does actually fit pine cones and pine cones are a good long look they burn really well dried pine cones so you can just put those there remember only use sticks really that are off the floor don't don't snap off sticks on fresh trees and things like that because a it's going to be sort of green wood and it's not going to burn very well and b it's not very environmentally friendly so just pick the, the dead wood the stuff that snaps really easily As you can see, I've got the hole here, just blasting some oxygen into it. As you can hear that deep, as you start to hear that deep roaring noise, that tends to be that it's lighted, it's, uh, the flame's going well, and you can put some more um, sticks in it then. So each time you refill the kettle, put some more sticks in it, 
and then give it a blow down here and that boosts the flame. That's going well now. And then we can have not just a cup of tea, but I use this for hot water bottles, uh, soup, boiling water for um, pasta, things like that. You know, you've got a litre or a litre and a half of water in there. That's a sub quite a substantial amount of water, so you can use it for quite a few things, really. Now, as I was saying earlier about the, uh, the green, sort of green wood, green sticks, picking it off, snapping it fresh off a tree, it's not going to burn well. You can tell if a stick's going to burn well, is that if you snap it, if it's a nice clean snap, that's going to be genuinely a good stick to burn. So if I look at this one, so that's a nice clean snap. There's no green in it that's going to burn quite well, so we'll put that in there. I know that's a good stick. Now the seam, you can see the seam starting to come out. Here's the whistling. That is now ready for a cup of tea. So you've got the wooden handle here. Just lift it off the flames, be aware of the flames underneath. This chain shouldn't be too hot. You can rest it on the grass. Just pop that off there. Put your cup of tea ready. And then it's a case of holding this chain. It's quite clever, really. So you hold the uh, back of the chain, careful of the lid, because that's going to be hot. And I can just pour it. Oh, there you go. Just lifting that chain. And then that is ready for a cup of tea, hot water bottle, you name it. Anything to do with boiling water, a bit of pasta. That's all set. The other thing you can use the flame of the giddy kettle for is some marshmallows. Now these aren't full size marshmallows, these are just those little cake ones, but you guys should be able to get the gist of it. And you can use um, those kebab sticks and just spike the marshmallow on the end of the kebab stick. But being an outdoors person and a camper, I like to go the old fashioned way and just whittle down a bit of the uh, end of a, a twig or a bit of stick really. And obviously when you're whittling, always make sure the knife's the blade's away from you. Kids, if you've never done this before, I highly suggest doing it with an adult. Obviously you can, if you've got a bigger knife, use a bigger knife. This is just a pen knife. No mate, that's not a knife. This is a knife. So as you can see, I've whittled that bit. I've, I've taken the bark off that. Obviously I've made it ridiculously thin because I'm using marshmallows the size of a piece of sweet corn. You go cart fishing with these. Well, you can actually. Pop up. But yeah, they are pop up, pop up marshmallow. So I've gone for, I've whittled off. Now it's important if you're going to do it with a stick, something I learned from uh, D of E is that uh, a way of telling whether a, a stick is poisonous or not is you actually lick the, the, the whittled area. So if you give it a lick, then you die and I eat the marshmallows. Right? That tastes like wood. If it tastes bitter, like a lemon, and you're like, oh, like that, that's actually poisonous. And it's probably not best to use that stick especially if you're cooking meat and things like that, because the poison then goes onto the thing that you're cooking, you then get poisoned. So just a little test really, I guess, once you've whittled that bark off, give it a lick. If it tastes like wood and it's okay and it's not bitter, then you're okay to put your marshmallows on. I'm, I'm gonna make a kebab style here as they're so pathetically small. Not exactly gonna fill my stomach up, but maybe a few of them will. And like I say, you've got that flame with a gilly kettle. Why not make use of it? Not only can you have a cup of tea, but you can cook marshmallows as well. So there we go. Got a few marshmallows on there. Now you can hold it over the funnel if you get the flame going properly, which I haven't at the moment, but the flame can come right up here and you can hold it over the flame there. If not, you can also use the hole where you blow oxygen in around the side, wherever that is. Can't actually see it on the camera down here and you can hold it around the hole if there's flames coming out there but I prefer I'm gonna put a few more sticks in here now get flame going and then roast cook these marshmallows on the top right look at that that's how hot it is look how quick those marshmallows pretty much roasted doesn't look hot because there's no flame but they are pretty much cooked marshmallows let them cool off a bit and Benefit being, if you've got lots of mosquitoes, especially you carp anglers, we know what it's like, grab some grass, if you put it in there, watch it smoke, and that, if I just get that twig out of the way, that smoke should hopefully help put off some of those mosquitoes. Obviously don't put too much in. Again, if you've got dried grass or anything like that, it goes a bit better. But you just get that smokiness in there, and that helps 
get rid of those mosquitoes. Just one final tip, safety tip really. When you're finished with it, just use the leftover water and gently pour over the remnants of your fire to put it all out. And that way, if you're bivvied up carping or uh, out on the beach, you can safely know that your fire is put out and won't be a hazard. Hmm. I wonder which one I'll keep. Mm, that one, I'd say. Ah, slight problem, guys. Probably should have told you this at the beginning of the video. When you're using these metal bases here of the ghillie kettle, obviously it gets hot. You must put some steel uh, plate or concrete or a bit of metal underneath. Otherwise, this happens. Mummy! Mummy, I'm telling on Mike! She's not going to be happy with that. I think I'm going to keep this knife, Dad. I'll see you later, yeah? Okay, mate. Best of luck. Oh dear. That's a very, very big burn. <laughs>